Hey, Kevin here from uh, selfreliantlife.com and uh, wanted to do an update video for you on this project we've got going, the off-grid cabin. And we're standing inside of it and it's in a, it's in the middle of construction. We got it shelled in and we got it insulated and so we wanted to be able to at least keep it uh, out of the, you know, the well, weather elements out and, and some kind of heat in here so it was comfortable to work and so that's as far as we've got. We're in the it's the January 1st, 2nd, <clears throat> right after the new year. We're in a four season climate and it is winter. And it's been in fact, very, very cold for the last week. We've had single digits overnight and even down to zero. And, you know, only in the teens and, and sing, you know, double digits uh, during the day. So it's been really cold. Um, interestingly enough, the, the heater in here is more than kept up with this and made this very comfortable. And so I thought we'd do a little tour of the of the structure and, and and maybe a little bit of an anatomy of of the build so you, if you're interested in, in learning more about the building process of a tiny house or an off-grid cabin so one of the, the great advantages of this so you can grab your notebook if you want to and start scribbling some notes you'll save probably two-thirds 66 percent or so of the cost of building if you do it yourself so the reason is, is because you got about a third of the cost of, of a building is materials. A third of the cost is going to be labor. And the, and the other third is going to be the profit that somebody makes off the build. So if you go to like these shed companies that are building out these little sheds and everybody's turning into cabins and tiny houses, you're paying a lot of money because they have to make profit. They have to pay wages to, the, to their employees that do the building. And then, of course, the material costs. And so if you want to eliminate 60 some percent of that cost, you could build your own cabin, tiny house, whatever you want to do. And it's not that hard, but it does take some understanding of, of, of structure building and framing. And so I thought I'd go over a little bit of that with you today. So the first thing I thought we'd do is just kind of talk about the overall specs of this pro project in particular. And so this building is 12 by 16. 12 feet wide, 16 feet long. It has an eight foot side wall and it's uh, a standard framing process with uh, hand built trusses. And so what I wanna do first is just kind of walk you around the, the inside of the building here so you can see and then we'll discuss the building aspects and the materials that we chose to do this with. So if we kind of start over here behind the camera in the corner, this is our front entrance, our doorway, and that's a three foot wide uh, door and that door is made for an exterior uh, opening and then as we come down the long wall here we're looking at the uh, next feature you're going to see is you see this wood stove that's one of our projects that we're going to be getting into this year and then as we come a little farther along we've got a window that's been framed in four four by four window double glazed uh, so it's insulated and it's, it's good for this uh, climate. And then we kind of swing around to the back wall here and you can see that we've got a little bit more uh, building done here. We got a couple of pieces of the wall frame or the, the wall skin up and you can see Sasquatch hanging on the wall there. Got a couple chairs and then I'm going to kind of switch sides here. The next side is our long wall again and we got just uh, some some straight wall and then we come into at the other end here kind of catty corner from the last window is another four by four window the same and then the other end wall here um, of course we have all of our building materials and supplies kind of sitting in the way but there is a door frame framed opening right there that we haven't opened up yet and that door is going to be the door that goes in there and so that was a second hand door we got a hold of and I kind of liked it because it was a glass door and that's going to open into um, an addition that we're going to be doing a little later on, which is another project. We're going to have a, a passive solar addition going on over here. So that's going to be something to stay, stay tuned for and see what we do there. I don't think anybody's built a tiny house or an off-grid cabin like the one we're building right here. So you, I think you might find this very interesting. So don't forget to subscribe. Hit the little notif notification bell so you know when we're putting new videos up and like it so that we can share it for other people. Okay, so we've done our tour. We see what we got so far. And so I want to talk a little bit about framing. 
okay? So this is a this is a, a building that we put on a little bit of a foundation, but not not anything permanent. Okay, so there's some advantages and disadvantages of this type of foundation. First thing is is it's not on on wheels, so we're not on a trailer that we can move. So you see a lot of tiny houses and little cabins and cottages are building them on trailers so they can move them around and they can avoid dealing with a lot of the uh, inspection processes and codes that you have to have if you're on a site built. I'm in a county where they don't have that uh, issue. You can build without a permit in the county that I am in, in with this particular project. So what we put this on was we, we cleared the ground and leveled it <clears throat> and then we laid a base of uh, gravel on for drainage and then we set four by fours treated, pressure treated four by fours on the ground then we built our frame on top of that for the floor and went up from there. So that's a little bit of a different uh, thing. Some people might do this on blocks and on concrete, and there's there's a lot of different ways to do it. This is a very stable uh, foundation, and it's, and it's, you know, we're in freezing weather here, and, and it works just fine. Another thing we did differently, well, what that allows you to do, you can build wider, for one thing. If you're not on that trailer, then you're not restricted to, you know, what width you have to go down the road which is about eight and a half feet also your height restricted again because you have to be able to stay under the height of bridges and, and so forth if you're going to be moving um, a structure around that's on on a frame and on wheels so we get away with a little bit wider building we can go a little longer i mean we can do whatever we want when we're on the ground versus on a trailer where we're limited to those restrictions okay the other thing is is weight we try to keep things as light as we can when we're on trailers because we do have, again, another restriction of how much weight that trailer can carry safely. And so we have a lot of consideration to think about when we're factoring in what type of materials we're choosing as, as we have to have uh, a set limit of weight that we have to stay within in order to you know, be safe and so forth. So, again, we get to get outside those restrictions when we're doing a ground building. Now, the other side is, is as a building built on, on ground, we can't really move it. I mean, maybe, but it's it's not going to be easy. So, so we have that kind of a trade-off deciding how you're going to go. Portability versus permanence or semi-permanence, which is what we're doing here. Okay, so let's talk a little bit. The other thing I like is I, I built this with a 2x6 framing. And so that gives us a lot sturdier wall, a lot thicker wall, and that allows us for a lot more insulation in the wall. And that's really important, especially in a four season climate or any climate where you've got extreme hot or cold environments throughout the year, which we have both here. And so it, it's, it's money in the bank, in my opinion, to have as much insulation as you can in your, in your floors, walls, and ceilings, because that's gonna make it a lot easier to heat and cool and, and temperature regulate when you're going through those seasons. And so what we did here as we we went with a two by six wall which is five and a half inches thick the depth of the pocket and then that allowed us to go to an r21 fiberglass bat for insulation which is as thick as you can really get in, in, in a wall there's r13 if you're doing two by four construction there's even an r19 that will fit in a two by six framing but this r21 is is the really kind of the max and that's what's going to give us our, our biggest bang for our buck and so if you take a look at this this is pretty standard framing um the floor is very much like the wall um same same thickness we did a two by six frame and we did a uh the sheeting on top of the what we call our subfloor here is three quarter inch thick tongue and groove OSB, which is Orient Strand Board, or chip board, some people like to call it. Very sturdy. Um, everything sits on top of the 4x4 pressure treated wood. Then we got our framing, then we got our subfloor, and then we'll decide what we're going to do for our finished floor later on. We haven't figured that one out yet. But this, the wall framing is the same. And, and what we're doing is we're going on a 16 inch center pattern. So that means from the middle of this 2x6, so the middle of this two by six is 16 inches from point A to point B. Now you can do a two by uh, a 24 inch on center wall if you want to, we could do that. This is gonna be sturdier. And, and if you look at the length of this wall being 16 feet, there's probably an extra 
<coughs> excuse me, three two by sixes to go 16 inch on center versus 24 inch on center. And we're getting, we're gaining a lot of uh, sturdiness out of the project doing that. And so to me, the, Latin, the, ne the extra three boards um, is worth it, okay? Same with your floor, especially important with your floor because we're carrying a lot of weight here. So that 16 inch on center spacing, two by six construction and the three quarter inch, you know, sub flooring that goes on this means you can walk around on this thing and it's not going to be spongy. It's not going to feel like you're, you know, it's wobbling or squeaking or flexing as you're going around. It's very stiff, very sturdy. And then the same thing with this wall, what we're doing is we have the siding that we used outside was a T111. So it's a plywood siding, uh, half inch thick. And that's our, our, our outside skin, which is also our finish uh, project. And so those are relatively expensive uh, because of how they're built, but super sturdy, very aesthetically pleasing to me. And you're not putting up some sub sheeting in here like an OSB and then putting some kind of siding on top of that, which is adding to your expense and adding to your time. Um, you can do it either way. We just chose to do this on this particular build because it was efficient and very sturdy and, uh, you know, really, really good looking, I think. And so we, we didn't get it done in time to paint it this year. It got mm -hmm. too cold, so we're going to have to be doing that in the spring. Okay, so let's look at a window detail. Windows and doors have to be framed wherever you're going to put them. And it gives you a little bit more um, detail to the framing than just the straight top and bottom plates with the studs in between. So I'm going to get my <coughs> fancy pointer stick and... What you'll notice is on either side of this window, we've got a stud that goes all the way to the top and bottom plate. And then we have, what we're doing is we want to transfer the roof load weight around our doors and windows. So what you're seeing here is this is supporting the roof rafters and, and the uh, upper plate here all the way around. And then inside we got another uh, framing here. This is our, what we call our jack studs. And these are our king studs and this is framing out the actual window itself and i double plated this so we got two two by sixes right here and then we got what we call cripples which are these little pieces that we're adding in and that's just to support and also follow the, the 16 inch on center pattern that we're going across here with so that when we put our sheeting on we've got something to nail to and we know how far apart those those uh, framing members are and then we have a double plate and the double plate works like this. We have um, our, our main plate that the studs are going into and then we, we, we're on an alternate plate. And, and part of the reason is you can see there's a, a split right here. So we have a, a 12 inch two by six coming down and then a four foot piece extending. You're, you're not necessarily going to be able to have one solid board up here because it depends on the length of your building but it's okay to splice them. And this is how you splice. You split the, the uh, upcoming framing member uh, on each side of this and it sits on top of that and, and carries the weight. Now, th that's a little bit of a weak joint and that's why we have the second plate up here because that's alternating over these seams so that that sturdies everything up. And then also what it does over here in this corner is this wall continues past and this wall sits inside of, of the long walls. So this butts to this frame. Up here on the second plate, this piece uh, comes short, but this one lays all the way over on top of this wall. So we're locking this corner together with that second plate. Okay. And then our, our, our trusses are up here underneath uh, this uh, insulation, but when we go to sheet the roof or the ceiling, you know, put the lid on with whatever material we're going to cover with, we need a little something over here to, to nail to. So this is a two by four laying up on the top of the plate that we're, we've fixed on there. And then we can nail to that. And then each of the trusses, as you can see, they're on two foot centers going across here. So we can, we can nail into each of these framing members to attach our sheeting. And that's what we did right here. We went ahead and put two sheets up. And, and so we start out on the, on the middle of a two by six right here, halfway across. 
and, and we nail to that. And then we, every 16 inches, we know we have another uh, framing member. And, and so we have four of them and then we hit the center of the next one again where the two sheets meet up in the middle of a stud. And that's kind of a basic framing detail that you're gonna see. Um, un underneath the window, of course, we're, we're carrying that load kind of jumping back here carrying that load around the window and down to the floor and then over here we've got our sill and our header and then we have here again carrying these at 16 inches centered because we so we know where our nailing pattern is for our sheet goods we have our cripples underneath and again this is carrying the weight and transferring it down so we're kind of transferring the load of the thing around the window. Same thing with the door, very similar. And, and just you're having to size your framing to the size of the window or door you're putting in here. And you over frame it a little bit, about a half inch or so, which gives you a little bit of room to adjust and, and level your door or window in the opening and attach it. And then later on, we'll, we'll be coming back after we insulate it here and we'll be putting our sheeting on and then we'll be trimming out our window for finish okay so that's just a little bit of anatomy now we haven't we haven't got the ability to look at the trusses at the moment but i can uh, do another video on truss building these uh trusses are two by six is a bottom cord which is the piece that's laying on the wall here and then the upper cords that are going up to the peak is, is a, it's a gable roof so an a roof are two by four and then we have what we call truss webbing so we have some framing members that go from the bottom cord to the upper cords and they are put together with screws and some gussets to hold everything together and keep it sturdy and so real simple easy to do basic thing i, I built them all right here on the floor before we put them up our final sub deck on the roof is is a, a 7 16 osb sheet and then tar paper, and then our shingles, okay? So that's where we're at at this point. This is an off-grid building. There's no electrical or plumbing going in here. So everything that we're going to do in here is going to have to be independent of the grid, if you will. So we're not gonna have a sewer, we're not gonna have water, we're not gonna have power coming into this building. So we're gonna have to adapt to the off-grid scenario with some of the projects that we're going to be getting into this year so another reason to stick around and subscribe so you can see one of our projects coming right here this is a wood stove and this is an off-grid heating source that we're going to be installing and we've been just waiting on parts and weather because like i said it's been in the single and, and even down to zero and so it's been really cold and so we're working on getting all the materials uh, the parts and components in place so that we can start putting that together and venting our st stove out through the chimney out the wall and up. So we'll be doing that. That's one of our projects. Right now what we're running is a propane heater. This is a Big Buddy. Everybody's probably seen those. This is a larger uh, of, the, of the Mr. Heater products and that has three settings. It's on number two. So we have our, our first setting right here which cuts down to a pretty low set and then we come up to or actually let's that's, that's that's low here's medium a lot brighter as you can see and then our high setting which I think is 18,000 BTUs engages the second tile over here and it puts heat out let me tell you um, I, I started this this morning Came down here a couple hours later. It was about 12 degrees in here this morning, and it's 62 degrees in here, so almost three times the temperature from outside. So quite warm in here, quite comfortable. I came in and I turned it down to the uh, medium setting just to keep the maintain the temperature now that we're at the temperature we want to be. We have a uh, solar system that we've purchased the components for. Um, they're still coming in in pieces. We have all these, uh, you know, the phraseology of supply chain issues apparently that we're dealing with all over the country from different industries. And so getting things is, is uh, a patience game, a waiting game. 
So we're still, we have some of the components here. We're waiting on other components that aren't due probably till the end of the month. So we'll be working on that as we get that put together and we'll share that process with you. Um, gonna be a pretty good sized solar system. I think more than enough to work the uh, power needs of this cabin. Uh, what else are we doing with the solar? We have the passive solar project that we're gonna be adding on here that's gonna be coming up. Um, and there's, there's various other things, of course, finishing the inside of this cabin. Um, one of the things that we're gonna be doing is, is some modular units that we're going to be creating that I think you're going to find really intriguing for some of the, you know, everyday living uh, needs that you would have in any, any uh, dwelling. So, you know, having a, a, a toilet, um, having a shower or bath system, a sleep system, a cooking system, those are all going to be mo modular components that we're going to be creating for this project that are going to be really unique. And I don't know that you've probably encountered those. So you can have sort of um, very easy to carry components, uh, very temporary components. You can have semi-temporary components and you can have permanent components to these type of projects. And so we'll kind of have a little bit of a conversation about each of those elements and different ways to do it so that there may be fit your needs better, maybe fit your budget better. Um, certainly all DIY so that things that you can do yourself versus paying somebody else or purchasing them and so I think you're gonna really get a big kick out of this if you're interested in this kind of a living arrangement and so one of the things I'll show you real quick here and then we're gonna end this is insulation so insulation comes in a number of flavors I want to show you this is the bag off of the, the insulation we put in the wall and we're just going to give you a little bit of a breakdown here on how you how you look at insulation and how you determine what what your needs are. So by framing this wall on 16 inch centers and two by six uh, framing, that dictated that we could have this type of insulation. So what this is is an R21, which it says right here. We got R21 insulation faced. And that means that paper that you're seeing right there, that's craft faced. You can get unfaced and you can get faced. We got faced, that's a vapor barrier that, that we uh, use to help with moisture. So in this bag, there are seven bats. So that's what, this is a bat. There's seven of those in this bag. So if you're trying to determine how much, how many bags of insulation, how many pieces you need, that helps you. And then it tells you right here what the total square footage is of the seven bats combined, which is 67.81. They are five and a half inches thick, 15 inches wide, and 93 inches long. They fit perfectly in that pocket. The inside of that frame allows for that 15 inch wide, five and a half inches thick, and 93 inches on the inside from top to bottom. So they fit just exactly like they're supposed to in there. So that's one way of, of doing that. Now, on the ceiling, we have a two foot center, 24 inches between trusses. And so we still have the same R21 and it's five and a half inches thick, but it's 23 inches wide, which is the span between the two truss members. And these come in a different uh, amount of square footage. And so you would look at your bag. I don't have one laying here for that size of insulation. Um, but you, you would have to, if you're calculating, you're going to say, okay, well, here's the square footage of the, of the ceiling surface area, which is 12 by 16 roughly. And so you calculate that and then you'll know that it took us two bags to fill this, the ceiling in with these size bats. It took us uh, seven to fill in the walls with this size of insulation. So that's how you determine how much you're going to need. Okay. So I think uh, give you a little bit to work with there if you're interested. If you want to see more, if you have any specific things you want to see, certainly uh, hit us in the comments below. Let us know if you like this, if you want to see more of this, if you have any specific questions about the process, we're happy to address those in, in videos. And with that, I will see you on the next video.